uh, basically, the name of the game, basically you see the descriptions here only if the test passed, right? Saying that, hey, Jenkins service should be running under system D. Done, right? And that's all you see uh, when, you're, when you're seeing the report. Uh, otherwise, if it's erroring out, you see all those red blobs about what the hell happened. Um, what else is there? Let me go to my slideshow. Okay, so yeah, this this was it, and uh, you know, definitely check inspect. Uh, it's pretty nifty. Uh, you can, as I said before, you can run against your infrastructure, uh, your cloud configurations, uh, everything. This is uh, pretty helpful, and uh, definitely help us like make sure that we're writing good Ansible code, and uh, we're always delivering what we promised, and uh, helps with item posts too. Okay, questions? Yes. Have you tried creating business templates for your users? So you mentioned talking to your your CSO. Um, have you tried making like a template for them to use, like kind of like a Mad Lib style? So. Define service. Here's a list of next verbs: should be, should not be, yeah. contains, whatever it might be, and values and sort of just say, "Here's your homework, guy. Go through and using these words in this order." Yeah. Go to town. So yes, we can definitely do that. Uh, but the thing is, this inspects documentation is so easy to read. Right. Right. Like it's literally. As you saw, it's like Ruby code, and but it's a very simple version of Ruby, yeah. uh, simplified version of Ruby because there's an abstraction of the DSL. It's just that you, you know, I, I don't think our CSO is going to have a problem with that of writing tests. I think it was not so much of them actually writing the actual test, but when they go through defining, here's my business requirement. So for me, for PCI compliance, I've got a oh. hundred things that need to be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you could give them a template, a template that maybe they farm off to their team or even to other business users across yeah. the organization. You basically just say, your job is to go and generic in a semi-uniform language. Yeah. In English versions. Of course. Um, <laughs> come back and say, here are the n number of things that need to be done. And then that way, when your team sits down with the CSO, you can go through those lists and say, you can kind of look at it line by line and go and figure out, OK, we can translate this, translate. Oh, Here's one that isn't very clear. Yeah. Jenkins should work. Yeah. Well, well what, what does that mean, well, right? It's not one of your words. So, you so, that. so we found, so to tell you the truth, we found actually, like that exercise is needed more than a lot of times because usually CSOs or their teams are not used to dealing with things like this way, right? Uh, because uh, usually the way they've been dealing with things is everything on paper. At least my, that's how we're, <laughs> our company had worked before. Uh, so this is like a new way of working. Uh, even if I, if we got that template, as you said, it's going to be very, very too high level for us to write in tests, right? So which is why we want to do this pairing with them. We sit next to next to each other and say, look, you know, we need like some concrete definitions on what does it mean? I said, make Jenkins work and or block all ports, like. I mean, all ports. Does it include SSH? Like, right? How are we gonna manage it? Uh, if it? Especially if it's a pet. I mean, if it's a cattle, no problem. We can just destroy the whole thing. But you know, so there's questions that always come up. That like it, it becomes a futile, futile thing to just create that template, send it over, and then expect a good result until you do this exercise. I think that's my experience. Uh, but I bet you if you had like a CSO that was like very, uh, I already create these flow charts or something like. I don't know. It depends on how their team works. I think I tend to look at things from a, a different point of view, kind of even from the people I work with. So <laughs> it, I think it provides me an opportunity to kind of throw different thoughts at people. Um, and, and kind of that bit where if the entire company, the goal yeah, obviously is to come up with, let's define an inspect for desired configuration for a given project. So this yep. might be, let's make sure that our bank of these servers are tested by inspect for PCI compliance. Maybe yep. That's the, the mission of the project. Exactly. And you sit down and you say, we're going to book a time with the CSO and you sit down and do it. Well, the CSO might look at it and say, yeah, I've got 20 minutes and that's all I'm going to give you. There's no way you're going to write all those tests oh, in yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah. But if you can sort of say, so here's an introduction meeting. Yeah. Here's your homework. <laughs> Either you or a delegate come back. So I'm, I'm hoping, exactly. So I'm wondering, like, maybe that will be, like, they can write the descriptions. Yeah. Right? And then you'll fill up things underneath it. 
Yeah. I think that's a good practice. Uh, like if that's the case. But for my CSO, we actually are gonna block time. Yeah. <laughs> we have that like uh, good, uh, you know, uh, conversation. But uh, like if you guys are kind of strapped on time uh, and can't do a pair program with your CSO, definitely. Uh, I think description would be a good place to start. And basically, they can write the uh, impact, the title, and description, right? And maybe that would be a good start for them. And uh, I don't know. That's it. Might it might be a good start for them that way, at least. If they don't want to put the curly brackets around that it should be things like that. <laughs> yeah. And I wouldn't expect them to write the code itself, but rather, I think that's a great idea. Sort of give them a, this is what, it, these are some examples of what they look like when it's yeah. done. So what you'd ask them to say, you write a title, an impact title and description. Yep. So this actually helps us, oh, by the way, I, I might not have mentioned this, but, so uh, this also helps us like actually govern uh, your environment changes too, in, you know, in, 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 in its entirety, because whenever, we write a test, right? And if, if, if it gets merged into the code, that means that we're actually, there's, there's a governing body, which is automation itself, that governs all of this uh, things and checks it out and makes sure that it tests it okay out. And, uh, and then we also have people that wrote the test that are different for the people that actually wrote the code uh, that actually changed the environment and changed the infrastructure. So that was kind of another game for us too, that we now had this governing body of automation that tests our environment and make sure that infrastructure is set up correctly. So this comes especially handy with uh, Google Cloud infrastructure that or IAM, which is basically uh, uh, user accounts and service accounts are managed uh, correctly uh, because they can go get out of hand. Uh, so we actually have like, we can actually write inspect testing that yeah, these users should have these access rules and it should not change. If it does change, we should be alerted, right? How are you gonna do that? Like Google doesn't really have a, or actually, a lot of cloud providers don't have a way to actually tell you. Uh, I mean, you might, they might warn you when something changed, but there's nothing that says this person changed and was added to this group if it's a lower tier group, right? Because it kind of forgets about it or doesn't care about it if it's a you know general group. Um, so this, this actually helps us with the alerts, alerting and whatnot. So it's kind of nice. Yes? The TDD example took, I think, about two and a half minutes. Like, what portion of that time was the inspect test? Test just. Uh, inspect test is like very, very fast. Okay. It's like seconds. So if you're right? running it weekly or monthly on your existing infrastructure, like you were talking it's, about, it's like unit tests. Exactly. It's very, very fast. It's it's like milliseconds, if it's not seconds. Oh, okay. I, seconds, if not milliseconds. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of it's kind of nifty. So. Uh, we like we continue to run it against our infrastructure right now that has like Google config, Google Cloud configurations. Uh, I think three servers, three Linux servers, and some Google con uh, also some containers that are running. And uh, it's actually like the whole test takes less than <coughs> ten minutes, and we get a report. And, and how you run it on a regular yeah regular like regular hourly basis, basis okay. right now. But we're thinking of like upping that up because it's just so fast like. And there's like no performance problems that are cropping up or anything like that. Because we were like, you know, wondering like, hey, would this affect performance? Would this like actually show us spikes because there's something going on, right? But the thing is, the, 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 the test itself is so lightweight, it, it doesn't even matter at that point. Like it just, it's literally almost like uh, running bash scripts as a cron job really at that point. It's very fast. Or PowerShell scripts for Windows users. <laughs> Fast PowerShell scripts. This quick, small, it's not the batch, things that do batch processes. <laughs> Is there any way to trigger it on other than a, uh, just a frequency basis? Like, can you have it be triggered any time you run a new one? Yeah, so, so that's why I showed, so that's why I showed this playbook. Uh, let me show that again. So this is actually the playbook that actually installs and configures Jenkins, right? So every time this runs, like if I don't specify any tags, the test will run automatically okay. too, right? Because in Ansible, if you don't add any tags, it runs the full playbook. Okay. However, if I run it with a tag, it only runs the tests. So here you can actually see, like this will always run each time like a configuration happens, uh, or a configuration change needs to happen, or a, uh, I don't know, installation needs to happen. But if I specify only test, inspect test, it's gonna run only that tag. 
So if somebody changed the playbook and didn't update the test, that would be caught up. Exactly, video. exactly. And that's what we're looking for, right? I want to catch, I don't want to create a, I don't want to create a duplicate of, I don't know, even Q, QA environment, right? Because that's too expensive for me, especially if you're in the cloud. I want to, I want to test it the moment it gets run, and uh, even before that, even, right? So I just can't, I can test it against a VM or something like that. So it's just like I can get rid of that VM, so it doesn't incur any costs, right? So it actually makes things a bit more cheaper. So I don't have to like create a whole replicated environment just to test my infrastructure code. Now, are you using a build tool to handle all this, or do you run it all locally? <laughs> so uh, right now it's local, but right now uh, the thing that we're building right now is a VM that can uh, handle nested VMs uh, using KVM. Okay. And once we set that up, it's going to run continues to run on the like it's, it's going to be basically a CI pipeline. It's a continuous integration pipeline for our uh, infrastructure code, and it's going to run on like that special box that allows nested VMs. And because it's vagrant, like you can actually, like this is literally vagrant, you can actually have very complicated uh, deployments where you actually build up like five different VMs, like if there's any interdependencies between services, you can create like this mesh of different VMs just sp spawning up, make sure that the services work together in tandem with the correct configuration. So you can actually test your uh, Zookeeper cluster or Kafka cluster just by, you know, using something like this. It's kind of nifty. So. Yeah, this is a very simple example and like a very small unit of it, but I think big. <laughs> so, so when you started with this, just, I guess uh, I want to use the term barrier to entry. I don't know if that's true. How long did it take you to actually get just the, the framework up and running? So if you, if you actually use the role I wrote in GitHub, right, and use that template, it will take you as long as it will take you write Ansible Galaxy in it. A project, right? That's all. Well, what about getting uh, the test kitchen, all that other? Uh, you just write. So, okay. So that's a good question. Uh, let me see if I can find it. So you literally run. Let me see if I wrote it here. I must have written it here. So you literally run these four commands, and you're running test kitchen. Okay. Uh, so you run. Uh, you have to make sure that you have Ruby installed first of all, right? And that's kind of doable. And then you run get install bundler, and what this does is actually runs this, uh, like basically bring these packages, it's almost like Python, if you're familiar with it, right, with pip install. So it's basically like, almost like pip install, and uh, this is like the requirements. Dot, I think requirements.txt file. <laughs> and you, it basically installs all this for you. And uh, what else is there? So, and then this, these requirements, these, uh, these requirements bring in these dependencies. So there's quite a lot of dependencies out there that you actually need, uh, but you know, it, it builds them in for you, and then, uh, and then you just run test.sh, and test.sh is literally bringing the requirements for the role, right? And the second thing is just run kitchen, test kitchen. That's it. And uh, I mean, it's this, like once I set this, like so once I created this template, uh, I, I actually don't, I just copy and paste that template, and just reuse that. Like I don't, I don't have to rewrite a bundler script or a gem file script or anything like that. When you're first starting out, yes, it took me some time. It took me about two to three hours to set up the initial version of a role that can work with inspect. It took me two to three hours. But once I create the like role template, I just copy and paste it, and then just I just add the whatever role requirements there is. So it's free. So you get two two to three hours of free. Time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, oh, one more thing. So, as you might notice, you, I did this with Vagrant, but you can actually use Docker too with this. So, uh, the reason I couldn't use Docker is because I had some, because this was a pet and actually uses, used actually systemd. So, uh, of course, you might know that Docker and systemd don't really work together, if it's, especially if it's an Alpine image. Uh, so, <laughs> So I had to actually use like a vagrant actual VM to get that pet up and working. But if I was actually writing a role for something more minimalistic, like, hey, install Java, right? I probably would have used uh, something like, you know, uh, a Docker container instead of a full-blown uh, VM image. And the Docker instances are actually faster. <clears throat> so it's kind of nifty. And, uh, 
yeah, I was just, I was just start, at start, I was using Docker, I was so happy, and everything was working very fast, but then I, was, I saw the requirement of saying, hey, this has to have a system D. I was like, dang it. So I had to rewrite that portion. But it took me like one line of code change, right? Because I just had to change the provisioner from uh, Docker to Vagrant. <laughs> okay. Questions? Cool. Awesome. Nice. I'm happy you guys liked it. I mean, definitely use it out there. Uh, it's 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 there for the taking. Taking, uh, you know, uh, you can use that template and uh, save some time. John, do you have a chance? Can you post that to the, uh, the meetup? Yeah. Meetup.com. Meetup sure. I'm gonna put the. I can put the PowerPoint there too. Okay. So you guys can like download it and use it. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the talk. Awesome. Yeah.